All right, we are going to begin the last thing that we need to be equipped for next week's test, which is entirely dealing with chapter five, section three, and that's on an arithmetic sequence and an arithmetic series. What do we mean by an arithmetic sequence? Well, an arithmetic sequence is just a type of sequence that actually uh, increases by a constant number every single time. Uh, it occurs to me that we actually should talk about what is a sequence first, all right? A sequence is just a list of numbers that goes on forever into infinity. So you're probably familiar with a few sequences. You've learned them as a rather young child. One of them is easy. It would be one, two, three, four, five. So all of the positive integers. And uh, usually, I just realized this is probably not the right color marker for this sort of thing. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way up into infinity. This is an example of a sequence. In fact, this is an arithmetic sequence because it's always increasing by the same amount, the number one. Um, what's another basic example of a sequence? How about um, this one? Negative one, one. Negative one, one. Negative one, one. It's a list of numbers that goes on forever and it just keeps going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's another sequence. How about this one, which is pretty funny. How about this one? Five. Five, 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 all the way on into infinity. That's a list of numbers that goes on into infinity. This is an example of a sequence. And sequences don't necessarily have to have a pattern or a rhyme or a reason. As long as, you know, you can list a number to infinity forever, yeah, that would technically be a sequence. So, I don't know, let's try like one, seven, three, four, nine, Eight, whatever. Uh, 123, 173, whatever. We can just keep going on and on forever like that. It's an example of a sequence. It's just a list of numbers in order. All right. Now, what makes it an arithmetic sequence? So this is an example of a sequence. What does it mean when the sequence is arithmetic? It means that the number is going to be increasing by a constant amount every single time. So if we were to stick with this basic example, well, uh, the first one, which we usually represent with a uh, use of one for the first term, that would just be one, okay? Then use of two would be one plus one, which is just two, you know? Uh, use of three would just be two plus one, which is equal to three. And use of four is equal to three plus one, which is equal to four, and so on and so forth. And uh, what if I said, hey, I want to find out what is the nth term? You know, you tell me what number, what number you want, uh, tenth, the tenth one, the twentieth one, the thirtieth one, whatever. The, uh, ge the, the general form of the arithmetic sequence, the general term, if you will, in this case is just going to be u sub n is just equal to the last term, u sub n minus one plus one. All right, but there's actually a, a much easier way to represent all this, if you will. Um, and uh, we're actually gonna go over that a little bit more clearly, but a better way to represent this would actually be um, the first term, u sub 1 plus n minus 1. All right, and the first term here is just the number 1. Okay? Uh, nice, right? So now we can actually clean this up. 1 minus 1 is 0, so actually the nth term should just be n, which makes sense. The third term is 3, the fourth term is 4, so on and so forth. How did I do that? How did I know that that was the correct answer? Well, it was because the arithmetic sequence, the arithmetic sequence, the general term is always the same. It's the first term plus the common difference n minus one times. All right. In this case, I added one to the first term three times to get four. 
1 plus 3 equals 4. All right. Now this might not be a terribly good example to illustrate this, so why don't we do one more example where it's pretty clear. All right. All right. Now here's an example of an arithmetic sequence where maybe it's not totally clear what's going on. All right. So 5, 9, 13, 17. What's going on here? Well, uh, the first term has got to be 5, obviously. And then what's the second term? Well, the second term is 9, but another way to think of it is, you know what 9 is? It's 5 plus 4. All right. What's the third term? Well, it's 5 plus 4 plus 4, because 9 plus 4 is 13. So again, this is 5 plus 4 plus 4. Like I just keep adding 4, how many times do I need? All right. What about the fourth term? Well, as you can see, it's going to be 5 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, and so on and so forth. So notice how many 4s are in each one of these. Well, in this one, there's 1 4 on, this, on the second term, 2 4s for the third term, 3 4s for the fourth term. If I wanted to write a general, uh, a general term here for the nth term, it would just be un is equal to 5 plus n minus 1, because n could be 100, and this could be 99, n minus 1, n minus 1 times 4. Okay. I seem to have a tendency to write at an angle when I'm on the camera. Obviously, we can clean this up with a little bit of algebra. Uh, this would, we could distribute this 4. This would be 5 plus 4n minus 4. And uh, we can combine like terms. 5 minus 4 is 1. So 1 plus 4n. That's another way to write the nth term. When you're writing your test, I do expect you to simplify all of your algebra. I'm sorry if I'm writing at an angle. All right. Um, now, this is actually number three out of uh, one of your homework problems. Um, this would be the general term. Now, one thing you might be questioned on um, is to find out if, if you give me a number, you can tell me whether or not it is in the sequence or not. All right. So like 3B on page 240, it says determine whether or not 116 is in the sequence. Is 116 in this particular sequence? Well, one way to do it is to just start counting. 5 plus 4 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 and see if you actually hit any time do you ever hit 116. That's the hard way to do it. Another way to do it is to say, all right, well, if it is in this sequence, well, then it has to be of the form 1 plus 4n, where n is a whole number. It could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The reason why we use the letter n is because n stands for a natural number, which is represented by the positive integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, blah, 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 blah. If n is equal to a positive whole number, we're good. Okay, let's subtract one from both sides. We're going to get 115 is equal to 4n. If we divide by 4, divide by 4, well then n is equal to 115 divided by 4. Big problem, and I don't need a calculator for this. I know that this is not an integer. You know why? Because it's an odd number divided by an even number. So it's clearly not going to be a whole number. If you want, you can run it in your calculator and you'll get some fraction or whatever. But all I need to know is that this is not an integer. Therefore, there is no number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 that you could plug into this equation that'll make it equal to 116. It's impossible. Or you can skip all this hassle and just recognize one thing. On the right-hand side, this is an even number plus 1, meaning the right-hand side is an odd number, but the left-hand side is an even number. So there's no way that this can equal that, ever, because this is an odd number and it never equals an even number.
So that can save you a lot of time. If you don't want to do all the algebra, you can say it's odd on the right and it's even on the left. Pretty cool. Okay. So if I ask you a question, is this number in the sequence? What you do is you say, all right, well, let's set that equal to the function that I uh, equal to the uh, thing on the right and then figure out whether or not it's true or not. And you can solve for n and you can find that n can't possibly be a whole number. Um, or you can skip all the hassle and dazzle and just say, hey, the right hand side's definitely odd because it's an even number plus one. And the left hand side's just an even number. So saves you a lot of time. All right. All right, a bit of a wardrobe change because uh, this is the next day now. Um, all right. So, so far in this course, you may have noticed that the homework, it feels like it doesn't adequately prepare you for, or sorry, the, these videos don't adequately prepare you for doing the actual work. So I just want to take one second to point out that even though you're looking at sequences and you'll be looking at series two, and you're going to be like, man, I don't know how to do any of this stuff. These videos don't prepare me all that well. Well, you got to recognize that the work, the homework, is also preparation. If you read a book about football, that's not enough to make you able to play for the Philadelphia Eagles or something, all right? You know, you actually need to do it a billion times. You can read all you want about the strategy and you can watch all these awesome games, but just sitting on the couch reading a book or whatever, it's not the same thing as going out there and doing it. Likewise for math. The way that you get good at doing math is not learning how to do it, it's by doing it and getting the experience, getting mentally stronger at that particular skill and seeing different problems that make you think in creative ways. Math isn't so much about knowing something, it's so much as uh, no, you know, becoming strong, mentally strong, so that you can face any new situation with confidence and um, strength. Okay, so I just wanted to take a second to point that out. Before anybody tells me, oh, I'm not prepared for this. How do I do this? You didn't prepare me well enough for it. Well, that's because the video doesn't do everything that's supposed to do. The work, the homework is supposed to prepare you for how to do this sort of thing. Anyway, now we're gonna move on to the last part of this particular section. And for this, I need to tell a story. A couple hundred years ago, or thereabouts, in a small country town in Germany, uh, there was a math teacher who was teaching, so the legend goes, somewhere around second or third grade, something like that. And it was a little schoolhouse on a hill, you know, with the church bell and all that other stuff, a school bell, I mean. And uh, this math teacher, he was really bored. He didn't really want to do any serious work that day. And he was like, I just need to give him one problem, then walk away, because I don't want to teach today. I just want to give him one tough problem, sit down at my desk and just, you know, goof off for the rest of the day. So, a bunch of little snot-nosed brats. They're just, you know, this tall. And he says, all right, class, you have until the end of the day to tell me what this is. So he does this. One plus two plus three plus plus 999 plus a thousand. Add up all the numbers from one to a thousand. I'll see you at the end of the day. And then he just sits back in his desk and chills. Now, if you think about it, just imagine you're in the second grade or so, and you, you, know, you know how to add, and you might know how to subtract and all that. But here's this huge problem. It's just a big problem that's supposed to take you all day to do, all right? And if you think about it, this is going to be a big number. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. Uh, 10 plus 5 is 15. 15 plus 6 is 21, 21 plus seven is 28, you know, and then you just gotta keep going and going. And then it'll be 995, 996, 997, 998, 999, and 1,000. I mean, this is a monster problem, and the work that would be required to do it, the traditional way anyway, would be ridiculous. Now, the legend goes that this math teacher just leaned back and said, ah, what a great day. I am such a good teacher, and Maybe less than two minutes later, one young second or third grader, whatever it is, walked up, showed his answer, and it was correct. The question is, how did he do it? So remember, the only thing that he or she knew how to do 
and I go ahead and tell you it's a he, it just happens to be a he. The only thing he knew how to do was to add and maybe a couple of other basic algebraic properties. So he knew the commutative property, which means you can move things around. He knew the associative property, so he can put parentheses around things. And he knew obviously the distributive property, but you don't need the distributive property for this one. You don't even need the associative property for this one, just the commutative property. You can move things around, okay? So I'll give you a second. If you want to pause, how did a second grader do something this amazing? All right. Okay. So if you are still watching, it means you've either paused and you try to figure it out yourself because you want to be as smart as a second grader, or you're just watching because you'd like to see the rest of the video. Here's exactly what he did. He said, hey, you know what? I'm going to group this up in a special way. This is actually just going to be one plus a thousand first. Okay, and that's equal to a thousand and one. Then he said, let's say 2 plus 999. That's also equal to 1,001. Let's say 3 plus 998. Well, that's equal to 1,001. And he just kept pairing them up, starting from the first term and the last term. And he just kept pairing them up. And he noticed that every single time he paired up the numbers in this way, it ended up being the same number every single time. And I realized that the glare is really crazy right now. Let me try to stand right here. Okay. Every time he paired it up, he would always get a thousand and one. So the real question is, well, how many pairs are there? How many pairs of numbers are there? Well, if there's a thousand numbers, that means that there are 500 pairs, which means how big is this number? It's going to be 500 times a thousand and one. Okay which consequently turns out to be 500,500. That's what he did. This is basically all the work he had to show, just that. Yeah, clearly. And he was right, and his name was Gauss, and he went on to be arguably the most famous mathematician of all time. Uh, so many things are named after him. You might have even heard the name Gauss before. If you've ever used the bell curve for anything, Gauss was the one that came up with the idea of a bell curve. And so to honor him, sometimes we call it the Gaussian curve. He did a lot of things in linear algebra too with matrices and stuff. So, I mean, the guy was a really smart cookie. And as you can see, he was really smart from even a young age. Using what he knew in a creative way that no one had done before. And it turns out that the reason I'm telling you this story is we're actually going to be using one of Gauss's equations right here. Because all he did was he said, how many times do I have to take the first term plus the last term by how many pairs there are? All right, it's the first term plus the last term times how many pairs there are. That's how you actually add up a really long series like this. All right, in other words, the sum is just going to be uh, n over 2, where n is how many terms there are, times the first term plus the last term. All right, that's how you add up a bunch of numbers. It's the first term plus the last term times how many pairs there are. And visually it makes sense. All he did was he said, hey, you know what? If I take the first term plus the last term, that's the same thing as taking the second term plus the second to last term. And that's the same as the third term plus the third to the last term. And it's all the same, you know? No problemo. And, you know, logically, why is it that that's going to be the case? Why is it that that's the case? Well, I mean, you know, if, if you're curious, let's take a look at it. All right, well, u1 plus the last term. U1, u1 plus un, so the first term plus the last term. All right, well, let's consider the second term plus the second to last term. Well, using the equations for you know, an arithmetic sequence, which is what this is, it's an arithmetic series. This one is just going to be u1 plus uh, d. All right. And uh, this one, you could also rewrite it as un minus d. Like you take the last term and you just take a difference away. And you notice that these d's cancel out. And so u2 plus u sub n minus 1, it's still the same as the first term plus the last term. 
And that's, that applies for u sub 3 and u sub n minus 2. You'd have two d's here, and you'd be subtracting two d's here. The d's would cancel out, and you'd be left with the first term plus the last term. As you can see, that's where that comes from. So, Gauss was a pretty smart cookie. All right. Now, let's apply it right now uh, on a basic problem. You know? So, let's say I'm going to take this sequence right here. Um, I'll make it up one here. How about 4 plus 9 plus uh, 14 plus 19 plus, and we'll go all the way up to, oh, I don't know. How about, uh, how about 94, okay? So the D here is 5. I keep adding by 5 over and over and over and over again. Okay, what is the sum to? Well, I need to apply my formula in a creative way. The formula, for one more time, is going to be n over 2 times the first term, which is 4, plus the last term, which is 94. Uh-oh, I don't know what n is. I need to know how many numbers there are. How do I do that? So I'm, I'm kind of stuck right here. What do I do? Well, to find out what this n is, I need to know what term 94 is. Okay, I need to know what term that is. Well, this is an arithmetic series, and each one of these numbers is a part of an arithmetic sequence. So I know that 94 is going to be of the form, the first term, which is 4, plus n minus 1 d's. But the d here is 5, d meaning difference. We keep going up by 5. So I'm going to change this to a 5. Look, I now have an equation for n. I'm going to solve for n now. And if you're wondering, is this going to be on the test? This exact thing is going to be on the test. I promise you. I'm going to write this test. This one's going to be on it, so take notes. All right, uh, a little bit of algebra here. So 94 is equal to 4 minus uh, 5n minus 5. So I just distributed the 5 a little bit. 4 minus 5 is equal to minus 1. I can add 1 to both sides. I'll get 95 is equal to negative 5n. Oh, this is supposed to be plus 5. My bad when the positive 5 times positive n. This should be plus 5n, plus 5n, plus 5n. Okay. I was going to say, like, wait a minute. All right, now I'm going to divide by 5, divide by 5, and n should equal, let's see, uh, 2019. n should equal 19. All right. n should equal 19. Cool. So that means I can just come back up to here, and my grand sum is actually going to be 19 over 2 times 4 plus 94, okay? Which, if we just take out our fancy-dancy calculator here, should be 19 divided by 2 times 4 plus 94. I get 931. Okay? 931. I promise you a question like this is going to show up on the test because it combines everything that we need to know. Sequence and series. In fact, you might just see two of these types of problems on your test right here. Okay, so one more time. We got this thing. We got to find out what that adds up to. Well, we know we got to use the series formula, which is n over 2 times the first term plus the last term, but we don't know what n is. To do that, we need to know that 94 is the nth term. It's the last one. And it's an arithmetic sequence, all these numbers are. So it's going to be the first term plus n minus. GG, my camera cut out there. So one more time, we know that this nth term is going to be the first term plus n minus 1 d. This d being 5 here. It keeps going up by 5. Solve for n. So I'm going to distribute this 5. Combine like terms a little bit. Add 1 to both sides in this case. Um, divide by 5, n is equal to 19. All right, then I just replace n with 19. Plug it into my cool calculator. Be sure to burrito your fractions, by the way. Burrito your fractions. Put them in parentheses so that way 
the uh, calculator does not get confused. And in this case, it turns out to be 931. All right, and that's it. So we got about, oh, exactly a week to prepare for our test, which is more than enough time because this is everything that's going to be on the test. You are fully prepared now. All right, uh, if you have any questions, ask me in class. Otherwise, I'll see you later. Take care. Bye-bye.